In the 80s, a red 911 with a whale tail and gold BBS wheels was probably a pretty common sight. Definitely a pretty common colour. But Joey Seely's project Nasty is something completely different. And it's a car I've wanted to get some seat time in and go for a drive for many, many years. And today is that day. back in the day when we used to name all of our projects yeah. and before I built it we called it Little Bastard but that was James Dean's yeah, car yeah, yeah. Someone else had got that. and when we were describing how this is you know with no interior super lightweight big engine kind of lots, lots of chassis it was all we could ever describe it as nasty it was just yeah. nasty so it became known as Project Nasty how did it end up with the 3.6 that maybe wasn't an obvious choice 12 years ago or was it it was. It was. Uh, lots of people were doing it. You know, back then, not not nearly as much as people doing it now. Now everybody's taking the three six and turning them into four liter. Yeah. But I still like the the three six. You know, I don't. I, I like the the lighter weight piston. You know, and it's making more than enough horsepower. What did this engine come out of? Uh, it came out of an RS America race car that actually was totaled. And the engine was fine, but we all, we also knew we were going to go through it completely. So, so how much power does it have? 360 horsepower, wow. 285 foot-pounds of torque, and the car weighs 2,300 pounds this with 21 quarts of oil. Wow! It's really uh, someone had done the math for me once upon a time years ago. And it was right there with a 997.2 GT3 RS. Yeah, that's not surprising. Now, talk me through the wheel and tie combo suspension setup. Oh, I don't remember. You always love to see that. Yeah. Rocks in the road. Good uh, <laughs> the tires are the uh, Falcon RT660. And I put the them on fresh. The wheels are BBS E88s, the uh, three piece. What is the size and width of the wheel? The, the, it's a 225 in the front with a, on an 8 inch rim yeah. and a 265 on a 10 inch rim in the rear. On a 17. 18. 18. Yeah, 18. Because oh, we got that. We got the big boy brakes on here too. So, what are the big boy brakes? Uh, Brembo. Brembo four piston front and rear. Now, talk me through the actual setup of camper. Cam how much camper are you running to get that medium rubber under what is still a pretty narrow body? So, uh, for the track, I'm I'm near three and a half degrees. And then street setup. And this this is the street setup, and it's about two, two and a half. Yeah. In the front, the rear. The rear is uh, still at three, you know, because it's like I, I'm trying to find that happy medium of what's going to work well at all times, you know. And on the street, if we have a touch of understeer, that's a that's a good thing. This but, is one of my favorite subjects when someone's building a streetable track car. You know, which side of it of, of the equation is it on? You know, is it too much of a race car for the street, or not enough of a track car for the track? And it's Difficult to get that blend, I think, of usability. You know, even if it's, you know, the engine when it's going from sort of throttle to transition, you know, where it's not all super cabby, where there's nothing, and all of a sudden it's like the light switch came on. You know, certain cars are too dirty and really sort of, you know, too stiff, right? Tell me your ideal suspension setup on a road like this for compliance, compression, so and how you dial it in. Yeah, so, I mean, you're absolutely right. Finding that balance is probably the hardest thing. I've learned more, you know, in all my years of racing, I learned much more at Pike's Peak on how to set up a chassis. And to make something that works at Pike's Peak, you know, we've had that discussion before. It's running three road courses at once. You have the smooth and fast, you know, flowy bottom section, the very tight, very tight, nose up, you know, midsection, you know, one through six, six through one, over and over and over. And then the top is really bumpy and extremely fast. So you have to like, once you figure all that out, that you come up with a, a beautiful setup that is very streetable. Now this car, you know, like I said, I built this 10 years ago or started the build 10 or 12 years ago. And I went a little bit on the heavy track side. So nowadays we, we are a little more subtle with our approach. Now let's talk about suspension travel and compression of what that actually does 
to the handle of the car the most important thing, I believe, keeping the contact patch, those four meter chunk of tires on this tarmac. For me, it's, it's uh, I give away too many of my secrets, but it's, it's lighter spring rate. Let the fluid do the work. Control the geometry, you know, the way Porsche intended. Like, don't get too creative. Keep the geometry from deflecting, you know, which is with the solid bushings and getting rid of some rubber, depending on the car. Modern cars, it's easy to go full solid with no noise, you know, NVH as everyone calls it, the noise, vibration, harshness, you know, but go with a soft rate and, and tune the dampers because that is everything. It's like you said, keeping the tire on the ground, absorbing each of the bumps and, you know, managing the frequency. a suspension specialist would that be true to say uh, yeah it's what I'm known most for yeah so specifically G-bodied air-cooled 911 talk me through the ideal suspension setup for for a Canyon hot rod type car you know a lot of the a lot of the cars that I, I do these days which is actually I mean fewer and fewer but the I'll leave rubber bushings okay I'll leave the rubber bushings because it's it's a little less harsh, a little quieter, because these are these are unforgiving cars. But then I'll focus all of it on on you know the the damper, because again most important, and a few little tidbits of solid bushings, like you know turbo tie rods okay. and a bump steer kit, and uh, maybe a camber plate at the top that you know gets rid of the rubber top mount, and then maybe the inner trailing arm bushing is solid. But leaving the spring plate bushings rubber, you know all that kind of stuff, really gets a nice balance of maintaining geometry where you want it to. So this is all about balance. It's all about balance. Yeah, every, everything right? in a car is a bell curve. You can improve it right over the other end, yeah. you know, and, and, and take away from the performance of the car. So it is, it is a balance of, uh, people think they need a razor sharp, like very, very stiff car. In real, yeah. reality, they don't. They think the race cars are stiff, but if nowadays when you watch watch racing filmed with high-speed cameras and they go slow-mo they hit an FIA curve you see it bounce you see it absorb you know they are actually at that level at that limit they are soft and you're not driving at that level so you want it to be softer you want it to be more compliant you want the car to talk back you know you it, you don't want surprises you don't nobody likes snap overs here Oh, Project Nasty, you thinking of selling it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Why? You know, it's just it's. We talked about a little bit of the stress of driving on these roads, you know. So I don't I don't drive very often, you know, and and I will not stop working on it, you know. And that's it's fun, you know. And I love the development aspect of things, but it just doesn't fit the business model anymore. And and you can't see necessarily the changes that I'm making, so it's not it's not good for marketing. Um, you know, and there's there's other stuff that fits the business model that I should in get into a new project. But also, like this thing deserves it needs to be driven and driven hard. You know, somebody who who understands you know raw performance. You know, so it's just time for somebody else to carry the torch, so to speak. You know, and for me to move on to another another project. I associate this car with you. It's a bit like me in two seven seven in that way. You know, this car is you. You know, and you've developed it over time, and you could probably build a similar one, but you probably never would, and it wouldn't actually be the same. Or perhaps it would. No, there was a there was a magazine article done a long time ago that said this car is an extension of my personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, sure. it, it absolutely is, um, and I will likely shed tears when when I let it go. But you know, it's 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 one of the, I'll never I'll never build anything like it again. You know, so it's it's the first love. Yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> you know, it'll it'll it was too much work. You know, uh, to really think, to be arrogant enough to think that I would have time to do it again. Yeah. I just I will never have time to do something so. And why would you? You've already done it once. Something. Now I'm a little older, you know, and I and I I don't necessarily want it so raw. You know, air conditioning would be nice. Yeah, yeah. You got electric windows. Which <laughs> electric would windows. Me a little bit. <laughs> and if that surprises everyone, because that's yeah. probably the only thing left that is uh, of of any tech on the car. You yeah. know, as you know, no power steering, no no power brakes. It's 
It's it's all analog, yeah. But it's not it's not it's, it's refined analog. Yeah. With what I would call modern day performance on par with you know like a 997 GT3 GT3 RS. Yeah, it's a, it's. A, it's modern mechanical performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because there's no nothing that the modern cars have, uh, no, computers. no computers, electronics, all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it, it all comes down to a, you know a modern type of air cooled build, uh, engine build. You know, selecting gear ratios perfectly for the car and the dampers and and brakes. Everything just comes into just like the maximum of everything under a narrow body. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, which is great. I love the fact that it's, well, it's narrowish. Talk me through as we're standing here, what is going on with this rear flare? So when I originally started the, the build, uh, or just before, I would get little burn marks. Yeah, yeah, with the tires. From the tire, out, yeah. from the tire Travel? kissing. Yeah, yeah so uh, we always knew we were gonna do a little something. So it's a little flared wider, but more flared up. And it's, um, you know, just a, a, a bulbous muscular flare. How did you massage this? Did you add a gusset in or you just stretched it out or metal shape? What my, did you do? my old body, uh, body shop just stretched it just okay. with a hammer. Got it. Old style, you know, just just and massaging it. Yeah, the lip is gone. Yeah. Um, and the front, the front is probably the neater looking one because it's, you know, it's usually a bell shape. Yeah. Now it's a little bubble. Yeah, reprofiled up. Yeah. So, it's somewhere between like a normal Carrera and a 930. Now tell me what's going on here at the back, back end. Let's talk through this a little bit. So the, the tail, I think you remember, yeah. uh, was a 76 turbo Carrera uh, wing element yep. and deck lid, but I closed off I closed off the, the, the oil grill, cooler yeah. and then put um, put a Carrera rubber on it. Right, I remember. So it, had, it didn't have the rounded edges, it had the Square scalloped edge. edges. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it flipped up higher. Right. That was a kind of a beat up wing deck lid. And I always knew, because it was heavy and, and beat up and cracking, that I wanted to take a mold and do a one piece carbon okay. piece. And that's what we did here uh, with the Sun Cobra. The, Got it. The composite guy that I use for just about everything. So we only made two wings, one for a client and one for me. And then we, not intentionally, uh, destroyed the mold. Ah, there you go. So there's two. That's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I mean, it's a super duper unique wing. It's it's cool, and it's it's ten pounds. Again, getting the weight off of the the business end of yeah yeah. 11. I mean, aesthetically, this fits it perfect. You know, when people have got a big wing that extends out too far on a street car, it's like, what's the point? Right. Now, right. talk me through what we got going here. So the the. Um, the reflector beam has been yeah, removed I see that. and it's now a screen and it's uh, we drilled some holes behind it um, to uh, to allow the heat from the exhaust to evacuate and any positive pressure that builds up behind the car behind the bumper you know to be evacuated so you can actually this is open to the muffler too this is not open to the engine okay. it's just open to the to the muffler and, and behind the bumper but what you what you don't see is behind here this is all open too in the in the bumper so anything to help with that rear aerodynamics of, of you know trapping positive pressure. It would be great to go to your shop, get this on a rack, and send it. Yeah, in. yeah, well, we'll, we have to, we'll put it up that. in the air when we yeah, get back. Yeah, that would be awesome. A few minutes later, I was at Joey Seely's shop, a motion engineering in Costa Mesa. We put the project nasty up on the rack, and we had a poke around underneath. I don't see any oil. Is this actually oil cooled? I don't think I've ever been under a 911 and not seen some oil leak in, some transmission fluid leak in. It doesn't have to, you know, it's uh, a... <laughs> How is this possible that there's no fluid leaking out of this? How is that possible? Take your time, take yeah. your sweet time and keep things serviced. Yeah, I, I, this this car has never leaked oil until, you know, people got involved in like, well, it's air cool, it leaks oil. And then that kind of, that kind of mentality yeah. is why it continued to leak. Because if you take your time, you do it right, it's not gonna leak any oil. Talk me through this setup of the exhaust system. You talked about it earlier, but let's let's take a look at it. Yeah, we got some long tube headers, yeah. um, which are kind of wrapped a little bit funny. Are these custom them. equal length flow match? These, what, what, they're, what they're, they're not custom. They were they were stock from somebody. It's a, a European manufacturer Great. made these, and all I did was you know cut and put the V-band flanges Great. on. Um, then we the, the rest of it is is custom. So we put cats on this time, which is this car's never had catalysts on it. I just wanted it to smell better yeah, yeah, and yeah. be a little quieter, which okay. it's still plenty loud. 
But uh, yeah, we got the HJS cats and then the exhaust is wrapped out and made wrapped around and made it to the 992 GT, sorry, 991 GT2 RS wow. titanium center muffler. Yeah, this thing weighs nothing. Nothing, yeah. Tell me about these cutouts you've got here in the, on the bottom. Yeah, same, same as uh, this idea of, of venting positive yeah. pressure so it's not like a parachute. You know, I've always wanted to do like the GT3s, right? You know, vented behind the wheels. Uh, so that's relieving pressure. It's relieving pressure. And uh, it, it, the way these cutouts are shaped is literally sitting on the floor and watching the, the light reflect off of it. Old and then and then taking a Sharpie and marking it. And so it's really when you're down on the ground, you don't see these. Yeah, uh, RSR style sway bar and you yeah. see it's set to full loose. Yeah. It's the softest setting. Uh, so but, walk me through soft setting on the sway bar versus, you know, it's a, it's a leverage arm, yeah. right? So the sway bar, you're trying to twist this or not trying to, depending on which direction. But the, the longer the arm, it's more leverage to twist this, okay. so it's softer. Okay. So as you move this position in tighter, it, yeah. it gets rid of that leverage arm, okay. so it tightens up the bar. It's harder to twist the bar. Semi-solid Weibo yeah. engine and transmission mounts. Okay. Um, the built, uh, the Bill Raider uh, Motorsport built the transmission. 915. With a, yeah, 915 with a limited slip and a Kennedy engineering clutch. Tell me about the Kennedy engineering clutch. Is that a motorsports uh, clutch? Is yeah, that a street it's, clutch? It's, just, it, it's both. Okay. I mean, you can come up with whatever. When you change fulcrum point and you change the spring pressure and you do a more aggressive disc, yeah. I'm sure they, I, this isn't a race clutch. It's somewhere in between. Okay. Four piston Brembo's front and rear. Yeah. Um, you can see it fits fine in the, in the rear. The front is pretty, pretty tight. But uh, we had to run an 18 inch wheel to, 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 clear, to it. clear it. Slotted rotors. Slotted rotors, okay. Uh, uh, a full race pad, which typically I don't do for street cars, but the limited street you know, driving that this gets, it's, they weren't that loud. You know. Padgett? Uh, Porterfield? They are, I don't even remember the manufacturer. They come from Brembo, but okay. it's called the RE10. Okay. So okay. I forget who makes that. Okay. I don't use it in any of the modern cars. Okay. So. Do you do many air cooled cars or are you mostly Not, water cooled? Mostly water cooled. Okay. Um, used to do quite a bit with the air cooled stuff, but as we stayed fluid and, yeah, yeah. and wherever our customers want us to got go it. is where we go. So you got to adapt to the environment. Right. So it's mostly 991 stuff now. Tell me about this rocker panel, which is yeah. not stock G Body 32 Carrera. What is it? Those those rockers yeah. are very heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and even the rubber strip is very right. heavy. So these are these are composite pieces, uh, replacement pieces of, of what would be on a 964. Okay, but without the shark, shark, right. shark and then one piece. Yeah, and one piece. Right, exactly. Right, right. It so really, it's, a, it's a subtle change to the look. Yeah, and it gave it this like roll pan kind yeah. of look to it. Yeah, it rolls through. Finished it, made it look nice. Let's go over to the front. Tell me about the front a little bit. What, well, what we've got going on here with the front A-arms and stuff? We've got it all hidden by, yeah. you know, it's just aluminum panel just to keep the, the air from being turbulent. But 935 arms. Um, Who makes these? Those are from ERP. Okay, from Kerry. From Kerry, yep. Yeah. Uh, so the, the rear spring plates are also yes. 935 spring plates from him. And then the through the body sway bar, right? Through the body uh, RSR style sway okay. bar from Kerry. Yeah. And KW on the front. Yep. Competition three ways. Got it. The raised pins, all the all these the raised right the spin Yes. Yeah. Yep. Now tell me about airflow underneath the aero. Tell me about that. <laughs> well, we we have never finished, but you know, um, there's gaping holes in the front of the car, so yeah. that speed there gets turbulent. Okay. That's drag and that's lift. Okay. So, so you don't want lift on the front that's end. That's why cars get a little light. light at high speeds. Right. This keeping the air laminar okay. and attached and not tumbling is the opposite of of lift it's a little bit of downforce and a reduced drag did you ever think about going full uh, bottom tray and rear diffuser or anything yep. like that you yeah did. i actually have the templates in the back oh, room we made them probably four years ago okay so <laughs> you, 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 this hasn't even something. been I, we need to you know roll some beads in this and powder coat it yeah, but yeah. yeah i intended to do a full flat bottom with a little diffuser okay. not something with louvers that you can see yes yeah. towing the line of you know keeping it clean and classic like it, correct right Go so on. Just something, because all you need is a little kick and angle. Um, you know, the, the actual angle depends on ride height. And so there's a whole science to performance, there including is. airflow and where it goes and what it does and how it diffuses mm -hmm. lift. Yep, so if you can keep it from tumbling the whole length of the car, that's gonna reduce drag and lift, and then kick up the angle in the back, it, it creates a, a vortex, a negative okay. pressure air that pulls the back Sucks of the car down. down. Yeah. Which is what you want. Yep. No lift on the front and suck yep. down on the rear. Yep. <laughs> 
Yeah. Is Project Nasty done? Will it ever be done? Is, would if, you do things differently? If I keep it, it'll never be done. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and who knows if it was when someone buys it, if it's continue it on or refine it. Got it. You know, because that, be, that would be fun. It's such a great car now just to, you know, go through and refine some of the things that got, you know, quickly done, you know, and it's good enough, you know, for me to get home, you know, yeah. as a daily driver. let so many people drive this car over the years and, and I let Patrick Long drive it and he and he got out laughing and he said Joey is that that's an air-cooled 997 cup car for the street well, you know <laughs> 997 air-cooled cup car for the streets a great way to yeah it. yeah Jeff Zwart drove it uh, on track and he and he said he's never had an air-cooled 911 with so much grip and the fun part too with the, all the torque and power and lightweight he, he's like, you don't have to wring its neck either. You can yeah. short shift everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, just roll on. You don't and have it's... to scream up to 8,000. Yeah, shift, right? yeah. Stress the engine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, talk is key. It's my pet peeve with a lot of um, current Porsches. Mm -hmm. You know, I recently drove the ST. There's no bottom end. It's all up top. You know, how often are you up top in this scenario, right? Never. This is where you need bottom end mid-range torque. And then it also has to function in stop and go traffic, right? Yeah. That's, uh, that's all new this time around. Uh, I actually put catalysts on it. Okay. So it's got HJS cats, and then the muffler is is from a 991 GT2 RS. So 991 GT2 RS muffler? Right. Yeah, so it's a titanium side exit. Sounds great. It's yeah. quiet enough when you want it to be. It's got a real interesting sound. Throat. body roll there, right? Very little, very little until you lean on it. And when you lean on it, you know, with, with you know, sticky tires when they're warmed up on track, it does start to roll. It does start to respond. Now, talk me through that roll. That's just keeping the rear tires on, on the surface, right? Yeah, yeah, let, I mean, you don't, again, there's a spring rate to sway bars, you know, so having Having too much sway bar, you know, it does limit roll, but I want, I want it to roll a little bit. I want it to, it's like when you walk on ice, you have your knees bent, right? Yeah, yeah. So you want to, I, I like it because these cars are a handful. You know, there's no toe change in the rear under compression, which is why they're so loose, why all the old videos, you know, even current videos of people racing these, they're loose. You know, it's because they're too comfortable and used to loose. You gotta get comfortable and used to lose, and the front wheels just become a rudder. You know, you're not doing a whole lot. So, you know, people like to point out that I'm lifting an inside front wheel, you know, in the corners, but I don't need the front wheels. I'm I'm using the rear. That turn gives you a lot of confidence, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. does what you want it to do when you want it to do it. I mean, you need a lot of open road, I think, to explore the performance uh, capabilities of this car. You know, take a highway at 7 in the morning, I don't think it's the place. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of, I don't think any open road anywhere really gives us enough. You can have a little bit of fun, but it's just... It's, we should have gone to Willow Springs. We should have gone to Willow Springs, yeah. yeah it's just too, too fast to really yeah. fully bring its neck. Well, that's the challenge with cars like this in a way is we're not even halfway through performance. Right. You know, so, and that's the thing uh, that also is that the sweet spot is wringing its neck. Yeah, yeah. Like this car rewards you for beating the hell out of it. You know, it's 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 funny. I, when I put Dayo Shahara in the car, he, he was like, Joey, I need two days. He's like, that is a lot. There's a lot going on. That's a lot of car and the limit is so so much further than you think it is. You've got to work up to it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. For me, 
it's interesting because I've driven a lot of 911s, so you get in, it feels familiar, you know, obviously it's the same but different as I say, but like you just said, we're not even 50% of where this thing's going to go. Right. You know, obviously this is not the most ideal driving situation to rig it today and get that reward to hire up the RPM range and go. But at this speed, it's a joy to drive, I'm going to say. I mean, everything about it's engaging. From the way it shifts to the way it brakes and everything. Yeah, the brakes I guess are... that's what, 12 years of development. Yeah, yeah right. And taking a lot of what I know from modern technology and applying it. So this car very much toes the line of remaining true to its classic form, you know, and then the touch modern. You know, like 18 inch wheels, you don't usually see that on a yeah. G body or earlier. Yeah, I was kind of surprised you were on it. Yeah. Now, let's go to the front and talk me through what's going on at the front. Is this an IROC narrow bumper conversion, or what is what is the front front bumper? That's uh, a, a knockoff of the roof yellowbird. Ah, okay, okay. So okay. with with uh, you can either put fog lights or a brake duct. I had a brake duct, and then I didn't need brake duct, so I I put fog lights or driving lights in there. Okay. Those are from a, a 997 RSR. Okay. <laughs> They're endurance driving lights, and then um, the yellowbird. This continued through. Yeah. And I. I, I always liked the look of when the 997 GT2 came out, it was splitter all the way into a radiator. Okay. So we, we just lopped that off. And you know, that's and all the way it. into your front cooler. And that goes to the, the oil cooler, yeah. yeah. And then this bottom splitter? The bottom splitter is uh, it started life as an aftermarket 996 GT3 cup splitter. Wow. So we shortened it, yeah. narrowed it, and made, made it fit it for fit. the car. Yeah. It looks pretty impressive. Pull that again. All right, so talk me through this twin plug 3.6. Twin plug 3.6, individual throttles, 997 GT3 manifold. That's all the setup from, from Rothsport okay. with Motec. Uh, it has a GT3 crank. Uh, basically, it's in GT3 rods, but uh, spec uh, from uh, Carrillo. Okay. And with Mala Motorsport pistons, we stayed 3.6. Originally because it saved money Got instead it. of having to buy. Well, 360 <laughs> is pretty punchy and a it's car that weighs 2,300 pounds. Right, right. So we, we did a lot of, uh, I mean, the cams are done, the the, the heads are CNC ported, you know, big, uh, big intake, small exhaust for velocity. Uh, I mean, I, I... Who put the motor together? You, Gap, Jeff? So this, is, this has been, this, it started life when, when I was with the Tim. Okay. Uh, then it was revised by Jeff Gamera, okay. and then most recently by Cornelius Gortz of okay. Six Fix. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and that was a collaboration uh, of, of Cornelius and Jeff. Okay. Just like uh, we're doing a few engines together and-, and uh, Now yeah. talk, me, talk me through the individual throttle body, because that seems to make this crack, snap, instant throttle response, no delay, no nothing. Yeah. Talk me through really how that- Talk me through the magic of what that is. The closer you get the throttle plate to the to the valve, yeah. the more responsive it is. So that's why it's snappy. Okay. You know, and then all six the flow flow easy, but it's just a crisp throttle. You know, even even without lots of horsepower, individual yeah. throttles are incredible. That's you know, the way to go. It's it's just yeah, snappy. It's fun to blip blip uh, between gears yeah. and you know, just deliver that power quicker. So Joey, talk me through the interior. Fully, fully caged. Talk me through the pickup points on the cage and everything else we got going in here. You know, it started uh, as a back half cage. You know, and then yeah. and then as we made more and more grip, and and the car was lighter and lighter. You know, we we saw the need because we actually in a corner felt the floor flex. Oh no way! <laughs> so, no way. so we tied in and, and made the uh, so the the rear um, rear section connects to the shock towers. Okay, in the rear. Yeah, uh, the in the uh, the front connects to the shock towers as well. Uh, but it's all tied. It's all tied to the A and B pillars. Okay. Really nice and tight. What is the what is the cage made out of? Uh, chrome molly. Okay. Yeah. The chrome molly. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, um, you know, it obviously added a little bit of weight, but obviously weight that's um, structural you know, rigidity, structural rigidity and safety. Got it. You know, so I mean, at 2,300 pounds, it, it didn't compromise too much. Yeah, yeah, I know, get as it. As far as that goes, for sure. But as far as the rest of the interior, there's not a whole lot. You know, um, honeycomb carbon, false floors, and 
you know, machined out, um, you know, footwell the pedals. Uh, supports and the pedals and, and whatnot. But it really, um, again, this started as, as, as I was building it, um, it was resto mod. You know, resto. As we're, rather than buying or upholstering things, we just removed it. Yeah, yeah. less is more, I guess. Less is more. And then that's a Wevo shifter, right? Wevo shifter. I like that. Yeah. And then we did uh, Alcantara dash uh, headliner and, and door caps. You know, just for a little bit of, a little touch of class. Yeah, and then you know? kept the luxury of the electric windows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And your RS pulls and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And a nice Protipo steering wheel with a extender with a, hub, right? Yeah, it, the quick disconnect and yeah. the, the one that people send, tend to notice is the, the roof gauge, which is original roof gauge, oh, but yeah, not yeah. from this car. It's Got from, it. a, from another project, came across it and became mine. This will rev to 8,000, right? Yeah. And I like your drilled, uh, Drilled key, that's a nice touch too. That's a neat little touch. Yeah. It's a 917 style. Less is more. Now, what are these seats? Obviously, say Recaro, but what are they? Uh, they're the Re Recaro pull position. Okay. Uh, recently just put them in because they're a little little friendlier to get into versus what I had the uh, Profi, um, Profi Spa. So it Got was it. a carbon Kevlar seat, super lightweight, but it was just too small for, <laughs> for I guess. most people. It looks like you've chopped down these side mounts to get them as low as you can. Yeah, chopped them as, as far down as they're reasonable to be mounted in the original manner. But yeah, yeah you're uh, Plenty a of lot of people clear. see it looks like a, it looks like a little kid is driving. Yeah, no, <laughs> I feel like you got to be low down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, man. Well, thank you very much yeah, for that. Appreciate it. So Joey's built himself an extremely unique and usable street or track car, Project Nasty, developed over 12 years. This wasn't thrown together over a weekend, it's been developed over time to be a very usable uh, scalp. I mean, it's the performance of the 3.6 on Ortega Highway on a busy forest morning is something I can't explore the limits of, but what I can say is the car is, it's easy to drive at these speeds, it gives confidence, there's a lot of feedback, there's tons of grin, obviously it's a 911 so things are familiar to me, but it's the way the power is put down, it's, it's back to the thing that I love, usable performance, you know, it's track focus for sure, it's razor sharp, the steering, the way it shifts, everything's so well thought out. You know, the 36 folder, Joey went over all the details of what's inside it, the amount of power that it puts out. But as always, you gotta put the power to the ground. And this thing does it extremely well. And then when you gotta stop, these big Brembo's, they scrub a lot of speed. But it's the mechanical grip contact patch to the ground. The way the suspension is keeping the tire in contact with the road surface. And then the way the power is put down with no real loss of power. Not a road like this, coming downhill, descending in these long, fast sweepers. I've driven a lot of Hot Rod 911s, I've built a few myself. No two are ever the same. That's what's great about it, is the actual diversity of the builds. So coming in a corner like this, fourth gear down a third, heel and toe, the pedals are super well positioned for the rollover heel and toe. And it's that sound right there, it's, it's, it's got a lot of torque, so have to rev the nuts off and he's got that what I love bottom end mid-range usable performance of torque. Horsepower's great on top end but yeah you're not always on top end with the rev counter pushing the needle up high. You know it's more about this mid-range. Right there you also see just how flat the car is. Sound. Obviously, it's air cooled 911 sound, but it's got its 
My point is, I guess the car is still attached to me. Yeah, and I think they always, and this will always be and attached. It, to yeah, I think so too. I think so too. It's it, it took on a, you know, a persona. It's got a bit of my personality. Yeah, for sure. everyone knows Project Nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you've we've been talking about you driving this for as long as I've had it. Yeah, yeah, Nasty Girl. <laughs> yeah. Today was finally day. I've, I've waited. I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe ten years. Yeah, right. And I got to tell you, it didn't disappoint. So. Yeah, yeah. Next time we do it, maybe it's on track. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to explore the limits. I think I've barely got to sixty yeah. percent. Yeah, really, and that's that's once you get above that sixty percent, that's, the, magic it, that's spot. the sweet spot for this thing. Yeah. Like I said, you have to. You have to beat the hell out of it and wring its neck. And then it's like, ooh, okay, this is what I was built for. I gotta come back for round two. Yeah, yeah. yeah on that note, I'm gonna wrap it up. Cheers, man. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. it.